Hi there, I'm John Moritz from the Curriculum and Instruction Department, and in this video I will continue my training on how to use iReady diagnostic data to plan instruction. In the first video, I reviewed how to analyze diagnostic results by reviewing the class diagnostic status and diagnostic results reports, and I provided a couple protocols for interpreting that data. In this video, I will review three different types of supports that are available to teachers through iReady. These will include tools for instruction, scaffolds for comprehension, and an oral reading fluency assessment. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay. So here I'm using the same graphic organizer um, and agenda that I used in the last video. It's available on the CNI Supports website, um, but I'm on the second section, which is at the bottom of page three, examining grade level supports. So the first support I wanted to talk about are the tools for instruction. Right here, you'll see this link to reading lessons and objectives. And this is a document that I found on iReady Central. And it basically is a table of contents of all of the lessons that are available on iReady. So um, if we scroll down here, it's 70 pages long, um, but it shows all of the lessons organized by domain and then by grade level. Um, and it gives the name and the objective. So if you found a tool for instruction that you know would be a good match for what you need, then you could um, check the name and then search for it on the iReady website. Uh, and let me show you how you would do that. Here on the iReady website, you would go to Assess and Teach. It defaults to Tools for Instruction, and then you click on Reading. And then we could pick our grade level. And then here you see are all the tools for instruction um, organized by domain. If I click on any of these, that it has a very consistent format for how they are organized. Um, after it introduces the topic, it will give us step-by-step -step directions, uh, which follow the gradual release model of instruction, where you'll introduce the concept, you'll do some modeling, some guided practice and then some independent practice. There's always a check for understanding that follows. And then most of the tools include some kind of graphic organizer or um, activity um, or resource uh, that goes along with the lesson. The second way that you can access the tools for instruction is uh, by going to reports and then going to class and then going to instructional groupings. And if I click on instructional groupings, what it does is it brings up a report that shows um, the students uh, results from the diagnostic and the groups that I already would prioritize as the highest need. So um, I'm not gonna do that because here, because it will show student information. So I'll jump over here. So I'll jump over to this PDF, which uh, shows the, uh, report cheat sheet. It's another annotated um, document that gives um, an overview of the report for instructional groupings. So this first part um, are all your groups and the number of students that are within each group. And then if I click on a group, it will show me the students that are within that group. Below the instructional priorities are the recommendations for teacher-led instruction, and these would be uh, the recommendations to meet the needs of the group. And then on the, to the side there, there are the tools for instruction. So these are links to those same lessons. Um, it's just that they are targeted to this group uh, based off of their results. So those are the two different ways that you can access the instructional, or sorry, those are the two different ways you can access the tools for instruction. One on the Assess and Teach tab, uh, to just see the menu, or you go to reports and instructional groupings to have them be targeted towards your group so you can see exactly what I really would recommend that you work on. Okay, so we've reviewed the instructional groupings cheat sheet and the tools for instruction. Next, we have tools for scaffolding comprehension. Right here, you'll see a link for an overview of tools for scaffolding comprehension. And this is a PDF that I found on the iReady Central, iReady Central website. Um, and it goes over how to use these tools. So the first part gives you an overview, um, comprehension at a glance, how to use data to plan your instruction using these. Um, and then here it kind of goes over the structure of uh, these tools. So um, what it, what is nice about these comprehension scaffolds is that they have two different scaffolds. They have an A and a B, and both um, 
the A and the B are two separate lessons with two separate different passages that uh, meet the needs of two different levels of students. The A level would be for students who are two or more years below grade level, and the B level is for students who are one, one level below grade level. Um, but they both are scaffolding towards the same instructional focus. So here you'll see that the before the reading, um, it gives you some directions. It's going to identify words that you might want to review with them as far as vocabulary. It gives you uh, some directions on what to do during the reading, which is always going to be to start with a model. Um, it gives you some ideas for how you can scaffold the instruction for ELL students. Um, then it gives you some practice uh, work. And then there's always a check for understanding as well gives you some information and some ideas for what you can do after the reading too. And then there's a, a separate PDF for this, the students, um, and that includes the passage and then the activity uh, that would go with that um, assignment. Also, if I scroll down with this um, overview, it gives um, these comprehension progression maps. So for third grade here, you can see these are the grade level outcomes for uh, literature, reading literature in third grade, but here are the priority skills that would um, help lead to achieving those outcomes. Same thing for informational text. So here's the grade level outcomes for, for informational text. And then here are the priority skills that would um, give you leverage to get to those outcomes. Let's look at one example on the iReady website, just so that we can, uh, so I can show you where they're at. So you go to assess and teach, you're going to go here to uh, tools for scaffolding comprehension, and then it lets you select your grade level. So if I wanted to choose fifth grade, here are my standards, grade level outcomes. Here's the teacher and the student um, documents. And then let's just take a look at one teacher example. Uh, this first page shows you uh, what is the grade level outcome that both of these scaffolds are, are meeting. Um, here's the a is um, two grade levels below. The B scaffold is one grade level below. They have different objectives, but both of those objectives are leading towards this fifth grade outcome. Um, <clears throat> it goes over how the meet the text. So uh, what are the knowledge demands that the students might need to make sense of this um, passage? And then what are the language demands? And then this was uh, what that the directions went over as far as what the lesson plan looks like. So scaffold A, and then here are, here's the answer key for scaffold A, and then here's scaffold B. The directions, um, check for understanding, and then the answer key for that. So another great resource that iReady is providing to help you with your small group instruction um, and meeting the needs of students based off of their diagnostic data. And then the last part that I wanted to go over today was um, the oral reading fluency assessment that is available in iReady. So it's in the same place. If we go to assess and teach, then instead of leaving it on resources, we're gonna scroll down and click assessment. And then right here we see oral reading fluency assessment. And I know that the district uh, highly promotes us using six minute solutions. Um, and I'm not suggesting that you move away from that, but if you have a need for additional resources um, or um, then here's, here's another option basically. So the oral reading fluency assessment is not <clears throat> a digital assessment. It isn't um, integrated into the digital platform um, for iReady. This would be a set of materials that you would print um, or you could use with your distance learners because it has the student passage um, separate but there's an administration manual, here are your rubrics, and then um, I believe that there are two benchmarks, there are three different forms, and then each form has um, six different versions. Uh, so you could, you could do a lot of progress monitoring if you choose to. So there is the um, oral reading fluency assessment that's also available in RyReady. So that concludes this portion of the um, series. Uh, we're going to do one more, which is going to talk about student goal setting and data chats. So hope to see you there.